Do you want to use an RSS feed for social media posts? In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about automating RSS feeds to social media and answer the questions, what is an RSS feed and how does RSS feed work in Metricool? My name is Elise Nelson and I help tech challenge makers build a profitable e-commerce brand. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel where I offer lessons that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. In this short video, I'm going to share with you how to repurpose content using Metricool by automating RSS feeds to social media for your e-commerce business. Before we jump into this maker lesson, I'd love to know, have you ever used an RSS feed? Did you use it for your personal life, like keeping up on your favorite blog or for your business? Leave a comment and let me know. So the very first thing I want to address is this question. What is an RSS feed? Well, basically an RSS feed is an easy way to stay up to date with your favorite website. It, if a site offers an RSS feed, you will get notified whenever a post goes up and then you can read a summary or the whole post about what's going on. So how do you find RSS feeds for social media posts? Well, first you need to decide what RSS feed you want to automate. Some examples would be automating an RSS feed from YouTube or a blog. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and jump right over to my YouTube channel, which is the My Schedule Biz YouTube channel, where I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the channel ID, and that is gonna be right up here. You're just gonna simply copy and paste this. Now, if you have um, enough subscribers to have an actual channel name here, instead of this gobbledygook, then you're gonna to have to look into finding your actual channel ID to do this. And then what you're going to do is you are going to take this exact thing, which will be posted in the description, and then add your channel ID to the end of it. Here you can see the one with my channel right here. Then you are going to come over here into a new tab and you're going to paste that. And if you see something that looks like this and talks about an XML file, that is your RSS feed. That is what we want to find. If you're doing this for a blog, I would suggest searching something like the best something blogs. So here's an example for mine, for Devil Clip. Mine says the best travel blogs. And so I found this when I did a Google search and it gave me a bunch of travel blogs. Then I opened up a couple of these travel blogs and typically the way a feed is gonna work is you're gonna come to it and you're just gonna take the actual URL of the website and type in slash feed, just like that, and then hit enter. And hopefully, you end up with a file like this. Again, this says XML, this is a feed, and that's what we wanted to find. If you do, great, you can use this URL to put into your feed in, in uh, Metricool. However, sometimes it doesn't work. So if I go to this blog and I put slash feed, you'll notice it does not give me a, an RSS feed that I can actually use. It just simply redirects me back to the main blog site. So that one, I'm not gonna be able to do that way. Sometimes if you look around, they may have a little icon that says something about their feed and it could be somewhere else. This particular blog, I did not find an actual feed for. But then I went ahead and looked at another one of these blogs and this one also worked. So if I go ahead and type in slash feed, you can see I've again come up with an RSS feed. So basically you're gonna go, you're gonna find some places you can get some resources from and then see if you can find their RSS feed. If you want more help with your e-commerce brand, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications on this YouTube channel where I offer lessons that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. So now that you have an RSS feed, how are we going to actually schedule this RSS feed to automatically bring you in content that you can post about for your business? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to Metricool and we're gonna go in from go to planning, auto list. You're gonna create a new auto list and you'll set up your auto list name, your platform, your configuration and timing. And if you haven't watched the video in this series where I talk about how to create an auto list, you'll wanna go back and watch that so you know how to do that. I go over a lot about how you need to configure it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's gonna be in the same playlist for the Metrical playlist. Just go and click on the link in the description of this video to get access to that video where I talk about how to set this up. Once you are in your new auto list that you're gonna be creating the RSS feed for, you're gonna click on linked RSS feed. And a minute ago, I copied my feed from YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna click right here and I'm going to paste that YouTube um, link that I got by adding my channel ID to the end of that feed. 
Then I'm gonna click search. And here you can see it brought in one of my posts from YouTube and it made it an image of it right here, just like this. Um, and it says evergreen content is so important for your ecom biz and it has the link. So this is actually bringing in the image from that feed automatically. Now, if you look over here on the left-hand side, we have some options that we can, we can experiment with. So the first thing is you can put your max number of characters. So for example, if I was gonna post this to Twitter, Twitter has a limit of 280 characters. So based upon what I wanna put in my prefix and suffix, which we'll talk about in just a moment, you are gonna to have to change this max characters to make it so that it'll work for Twitter. Now for the prefix, it's gonna be any text that you want to appear before the pulled in data. Now keep in mind, this will be the same on every single post. So if I'm pulling in my YouTube channel, I might say something like, new video posted just posted today, and I want that to be on every single post. So then I could put that right here. You can also add emojis. So if I wanted to add an emoji here, I could do that. Now you wanna keep in mind whether you need to put any returns. So you can see over here looking at what it looks like, I don't have any returns, so it just immediately starts off with evergreen content. So if I wanted there to be an enter here, I can set that up as well. And that will separate out my you know thing that comes up in everything from this. So you just have to decide what you want your prefix to be. You may not want it to be anything. Then you can also add a suffix. A lot of times what I'll put for my suffix is my website. So maybe I wanna do as my suffix. But do you see how it added it into this word because there was no spaces or anything? So on your suffix, you oftentimes wanna add a return before the suffix. And now if you do a link the way I just did, you run the risk of the image that's being pulled in being for your link instead of for the YouTube video. So just keep that in mind. You wanna just be careful with that. Depending upon the platform, that could happen. Um, on a lot of platforms, if you don't put the HTTPS, it will not recognize it as a link, so you may be able to get away with that. So I would suggest testing this and seeing how it's gonna work for your specific platform with your specific RSS feed. Then once you have your that done, you wanna look down here at these last three options. The very first one is to add 15 previous posts. What this means, especially if you're setting up a new feed, is it'll bring in the last 15 things from that feed so that you can have content to go ahead and start posting. So this can be really helpful, especially if you're bringing in content from someone else's blog, let's say, and um, that will give you 15 posts to immediately have ready to go. Maybe you schedule those in your auto list to go up once every two weeks, and now you've got content for several months from just those 15 posts. So decide if you wanna bring in your previous posts or not, you can turn that on or off. And then you also wanna decide if you want those posts to automatically go up or if you want them to be disabled. So for example, if you wanted to check and make sure that it has the copy that you want, you could have it be disabled when it's uploaded, and then you'll have to go in and double check those posts and turn them on so that they will actually post. Upside is you can double check that everything's gonna look good. Downside is if you forget to go and check it and fix it and turn it on, it'll never post. So you're gonna have to decide which is best here. And then finally, you wanna decide if you wanna add new posts at the beginning of the auto list or the end. So depending upon what type of content you are doing this for is going to vary what you wanna do here. So for example, if you are making a list of your newest videos from YouTube, you obviously want the new post to go at the beginning so that it'll post about your new video as opposed to an old video. However, if you are creating a running list of all your videos from YouTube so that you will be constantly reposting about them to your social media, which is a really smart thing to do by the way, then you may want new posts to be at the end so that it's posting about an older piece of content and it's making it so that it's going a little bit further out before you talk about that specific video again. So all of these can be changed for whatever's gonna work best for your brand. Typically, when you're starting a new RS, RSS feed, I recommend bringing in the 15 previous posts. So then we're gonna click on save. It'll take it just a moment and then you'll see here we are back in our auto list and we now have posts that are in here, which is really, really fun. Now. I am setting this up for Facebook. So you'll notice we've talked about in our previous videos, you wanna make sure that an image generates. And in this case, that did not happen. Part of the reason that did not happen is because Facebook is set up in Metricool to pull the image from your link. 
which is why you have to be really careful about adding additional links into your post. Also, sometimes these will be pushed through, especially on Facebook, and the image will never come across. And so if you have a post like this that doesn't show the image or the video, you may run into an issue of when this post, you don't actually have any creatives. So in just a minute, I'll come back and show you how to fix that. But before we jump into the rest of the video, please like this video and be sure to stick with me to the end of the video to learn your challenge for the day. All right, so as you can see, none of that was imported. So what do we do? Oh no, it's terrible, it's ruined. Well, that's not really true. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and we are going to actually change which platforms we're going to be using. So this happens for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. All three of those, if you try and import an RSS feed, you run the risk of them not posting the image when it goes onto your account, which if you don't care if the image is there, that's fine. But if you do care if there's an image, then you're gonna to wanna to do this little hack that I have for you. All right, so I'm gonna click delete all, and I'm going to accept to delete those posts because I don't want the posts to have no image. And sometimes it doesn't immediately show, so if you come up here and just refresh, it will show that they're gone. Okay, so now you can see there's no post here. I'm also going to trash the feed just because I wanna start it over again. And then I, if you select Instagram or Pinterest to get these posts, the, it will automatically bring in the image. So I'm going to select Pinterest and I'm just gonna go ahead and do Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest all together because all of those can have hashtags and a link. Instagram needs to have click link in bio, so I wouldn't necessarily publish it with the others, but I would be okay with publishing these four together. So I'm gonna click all of those, and because I've selected Pinterest, it's gonna bring in the image, which is really, really neat. So I'm gonna go to linked RSS feed again to re-import this, uh, this uh, RSS feed. Click search. And we're back to the beginning where we were before, where you can edit your things. Now I can see the four different versions because I selected all four of them. So you can see how all of these are gonna look. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the 15 previous posts again, and I'm gonna hit save. And you can see this time it's taking longer. And that's because it's actually going right now to get the images from those URLs to import. All right, so now you can see if I scroll down, it actually imported those images now. And so these images are actually going to be there whenever these post to these platforms. And so that's what we want. Now, the only thing here is you have to leave Pinterest connected because otherwise every time it pulls in something from the feed, it's not going to transfer for the image unless either Instagram or Pinterest are selected. So you cannot now um, turn off Pinterest. You have to leave Pinterest connected to this in order for it to import the image each time. Um, so that's the downside. On any RSS feed, you basically have to be posting to either Instagram or Pinterest automatically if you wanna force it to bring the image in. And this is the only way to make sure the image is gonna post when it goes up. I already showed you how to disconnect the feed by clicking the little trash can, and I already showed you how to delete all the posts if you ever need to do that. But I also wanna show you how to go into the feed and make changes. So if I click into this feed, you can see I have that same thing that I was looking at before. So if at any point you wanted to add 15 previous posts, you could do it again. It doesn't really make sense to do that. If you say forgot to put in your URL, You could do that. And now since the images are already imported, it's not going to hurt anything for this to keep happening because it's actually gonna import from the original place. Um, you can also change it to disable. You can also add it to post at the beginning. Any of those things you can come in here and change after the fact. Now I do want to show you that I made a change, but it did not edit the existing post. So do you see how now I don't have the link here for um, my website? And that is because I did not, it does not actually change posts that are already existing. So if I wanted to have the post all automatically update, I would have to do delete all and then re-import the 15, or I can come in and I can click and I can manually add that information. So you can see there I've added some additional information at the bottom. So whatever makes you happy, that's how you're gonna have to do that. So again, for the RSS feeds and Metrical, you wanna make sure you have either Instagram or Pinterest on the RSS feed to publish to, 
so that you get the images imported. If you're not so concerned about having the images attached and you're not too worried about occasionally having one go up that doesn't have an image, then you may not need to do that. So today's question was, have you ever used an RSS feed? Did you use it for your personal life to keep up with your favorite blog or for your business? Leave a comment and let me know. To get the full Metricool tutorial, you can watch the Metricool tutorial playlist. Also be sure to get the easiest social media organization system and schedule all your posts on all your platforms with just one spreadsheet. The links for both of those are in the description. Be sure to watch my last YouTube video about how to use CSV files in Metricool for your e-commerce business. In the next video, we'll be discussing how to manage social media with Metricool Chrome browser extension. If you're ready to give Metricool a try, click the link in the description to sign up and try the free account right now. Your challenge for today is going to be to create an RSS feed link for your YouTube channel or blog if you have one and find two to three bloggers in your industry that you could curate posts from. Don't forget to live your dream every single day and I will see you in the next lesson.